Hello everyone. Uh, tonight, while I was scrolling through my Instagram, I came upon this nymph that's almost a forgotten one. And once it was like one of the basic nymphs in my box. And I can recall some memories with my friend uh, when we were using this nymph and we were like, we couldn't believe how well it catches fish. Uh, so without any further ado, let me just go straight into tying and I'll explain everything as I go and as I go I'll just uh, introduce materials that I'm, I'm using for this one uh, of course all materials materials you can and you should uh, substitute for anything that you have or you think it's better so for the body I'm using uh, UTC in 70 denier olive uh, light olive actually and uh, let me just start. So I'll start with a thread where I think my thorax should begin more or less. So this is just for my reference here. And after just a couple of wraps, I'll stop there. I'm not going to build a thread layer because I don't want any build up here. I want to, to make rather relatively slim fly. So first I'm going to, to attach copper wire and I place copper wire to, to match the thread or a little bit to the rear and I catch it with just a couple of turns and then I'll use this animal for the tail it's called Tragopan it has beautiful little feather I use it only for tails because this is the whole patch I have and I got it from my friend a long time ago and I'm like keeping it as a sacred one. Uh, I don't think it's magical but it's just cool little material that flares beautifully and just this red part for the tail is already like measured for you so I'm just using red part for the tail and uh, by using pinch and loop I'm catching tail on the top of the hook and I'm going towards the bead and that's the, the point where I will stop. Now I'll go backwards and this is how I tre create my taper. I guess that I'm saying this in every video but it's not bad to mention it again. Notice how the thread is flat it uh, prevents uh, any buildup like this. Now, it's, now you can just snip off this or break it off or whatever there is one left but I'm gonna cover it later now for the back case well back cover I'm going to use just one olive biot and it's turkey biot front part of the feather uh, I'm not using the ones from the that are very long I'm going to use those for biot bodies I'm using those, those shorter ones that I actually cannot use for anything else uh, now notice one thing now, uh, it's not important how you will place your bias, it's important like which side of the bias is fa facing you, it's not going to be symmetrical when you look from it, uh, from the above, I'm just placing it towards me because when I start wrapping with thread, the thread will push it and place it on the top of the hook as you can see here. Now go forward and make sure that your thread is flat ensuring that you're going to even up and smooth the body here cut this part now when you are satisfied you can stop because this is more or less I went with my thread a little bit too much this is a place where I will stop with my body later now I'll just wrap my thread a little bit counterclockwise until it flattens. Sometimes it's good to rest it down and you see which si uh, which direction it's going to spin and then just use that side and spin it that way so it doesn't catch, it doesn't twist and make that round profile. Now for the body I'm using uh, this olive dubbing, it's uh, wildcats dubbing and uh, well I know it's probably not available for most people here but you can use any kind of under fur in olive color 
or any color that matches insects um, in your area uh, it's rather fine not too many guard hairs here so it's fine it's going to make beautiful taper here um, the secret to making beautiful taper as well is to use as little dubbing as possible and something that I've just learned uh, is that you should dub your thread clockwise if you watch from the above it will actually tighten up your dubbing as you wrap it uh, one of the viewers pointed out that one for me and for all these years and I, I, I've been tying for like probably more than 20 years now uh, for all these years I didn't know that actually it's quite logical because I'll do a video about that uh, when you wrap, wrap materials it's going uh, if you combine two materials and if you spin them clock, uh, clockwise they're actually going to tighten up as you as you wrap them together and I never thought that I could apply that to dubbing so thank you very much uh, sorry I forgot the name um, and now let me continue with dubbing now you can just go in touching turns and as you can see it it's just aligning very very beautifully it's not creating too much build up here now I'm, go I'm gonna add just a tiny little bit here I just need for one more wrap more or less as you can see okay this is it now use something to help you and catch the biot it's too short for me for my fingers I use just one wrap, two wraps, and I place it on the top. Then I pull with my hand and I add one more. This is to ensure it doesn't go away. Now, be careful when making a first wrap with wire, it can twist your tail. So just make sure you're going over the body and then in even turns, just make those ribbings and it will create those this beautiful uh, back cover uh, I say beautiful I don't mention any function here uh, because honestly I don't believe it has anything to do with uh, how much how many fish you will catch with this fly uh, I do believe it looks pretty and if a fly looks good not pretty not necessarily pretty if, if a fly looks good in your eyes you're going to uh, have more confidence in that fly and as a consequence you're going to catch more fish so believing in your fly is actually quite a big deal now for the back cover I'm going to use nymph body wrap it's kind of I don't know just latex I guess uh, it's Chinese brand you can check out okay and it's too white so because I don't have anything thinner I just made this like pointy shape and I'm going to place the pointy shape same as I placed by it I'm going to place it towards me and I'm going to rotate it with thread okay now I'm going with tight turns I'm going backwards and I'll go more or less almost uh, a little bit between one half and one third. I want that uh, that ratio to be one third, two thirds here. Actually, this is a little bit more than one third. Now I'm going to uh, switch between my threads. Okay. Now. I'm switching between threads because I want to use orange as a hotspot and this is, sorry, I almost forgot to tell you, uh, Vivas 12, 12 out orange, it's more or less classic color for thorax, you can use pink if you like, it's probably as good, red, purple, whatever you like. Now, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you can color the thread but since I don't have marker next to me I guess uh, I do have I do have so you can color the thread if you don't want to see the orange 
going through the going through the dubbing. So I just use marker and I dub like what two centimeters of it. And then I'm using squirrel CDC mix that I actually made a video about. And then again, I'm using rather thin noodle here. I don't want too many hairs sticking out. Uh, I know some people would like buggy effect. You're free to do that here. I like this fly to be tight. And by creating tight fly, I'm creating a fly that can sink rather quickly. And by using uh, natural materials, I'm giving it a little bit of life. So I'm just gonna check if I need one more wrap here. You can also do this, fold it, check if it looks good. If it does, just proceed forward. And I'll add just a small little bit of dubbing over here. And I forgot to use what a guy told me. So clockwise motion. Uh, well, some habits are actually quite difficult to change. And this one is one of them. Now I'll just check if I like this from all sides. And as you can see, more or less good. Maybe I would prefer this to be like half mm longer, but this is going to be nice. Now, two wraps in front to make everything secure, and then we'll finish the fly. Don't use too many wraps here. I mean, you just need two wraps to catch the material. You're not pulling anything tight. You're not stretching the material, so it's, it will pull out, uh, pull away. Uh, no, you're just catching with thread, and by uh, making those two whip finish knots here, you're creating a nice discreet uh, discreet uh, hotspot. And I don't like, I mean, in, in my past I, I did very wide hotspots, uh, but as time goes, I just prefer those tiny little ones. Now I'm gonna cut those big and long hairs. And this is more or less it. The only moment where I'm going to actually pull this latex is now. I'm going to cut it flush. I mean, it's going to create a, a fan here, fan shaped here, which you probably can cut somehow, but even with these fine point scissors, it's going to be a bit tricky. And this is it. So now you can add some UV glue or whatever, but original version doesn't call for it. So this is it, original version of this uh, fly, Betty's fly, Betty's nymph. Uh, what is interesting about these flies is that you can actually fish them uh, very often with some twitches because these kind of nymphs, they, actually, they, they know how to swim. They are pretty good swimmers for, for a nymph. And um, size 14, this is size 14, I forgot to mention that. Uh, size 14 is probably the, the the largest one I would go, but I would change sometimes occasionally the the, the tungsten here uh, instead of 3 mm that I'm using right now. I would use even four. Like for some extreme situations, it would be four. More often, it would be 3.5 and 3 mm. And then as I go down, I'll just uh, decrease the, the the size of the tungsten as well. Uh, so guys, I hope you like this video and i hope you like this fly uh if you did give it a like subscribe and see you next week